Hello? Okay, Monica, not today, okay? Not today. Kartik. Kartik. Chupka. Ithia. Chupka. Okay, let's go. Shh. Okay, we are now being recorded, okay? So if I call your name out, I'll have to call your mom and tell her, let's watch YouTube here, okay? Watch what your child does in my class. Okay, then don't blame me. Okay, so quick review on left and right boundary or right and left boundary. Need I explain this? You all understand what right means and you all understand what left means. Okay. Exactly. Okay, the top right corner and the top left corner. Uh, again, I want to reiterate that I don't like the terminology the book uses, S and Tuesday. I don't like the terminology the book uses. It uses lower and upper. It, it can be very misleading. For them, lower means the smaller area, upper means the bigger area. Depending on the shape of the graph, okay, left might be bigger or it might be smaller, depending on the shape of the graph. So let's not do that. We'll just go left boundary and right boundary. Okay? So everybody's got this down. I don't need to explain this. Okay. Um, In that case, okay, don't have a hissy fit when you see this then. Why is this not going all the way? Sorry, what was that? Oh, uh, what? Oh, uh, get these two formulas down, okay? All right, so what, this is what it's trying to do, okay? Say you've got a curve, okay, and let's say it looks like this, okay. What you're trying to do is you're trying to find the area underneath the curve between x equals a and x equals b, okay, by drawing rectangles. Okay, by drawing rectangles. The width of each rectangle the width of each rectangle is delta, which is given by this equation here. Everybody understand where that comes from, right? It's b minus a over n. b minus a is the width over which you want to find the area. There are n rectangles, so you divide each one. So you divide it by n to get the width of each one. Then from yesterday or a couple of days ago, maybe Wednesday, uh, I hope you, I convinced you that f would be the height of that rectangle. Okay, F would be the height of the rectangle. So uh, that's for the right boundary point, okay? Uh, I'll just use this one here, okay? So this would be the height of a rectangle. So each unit in here, each unit in here is an area of a rectangle, area of one rectangle, okay? And then the sigma, what does the sigma do? What does the sigma do? Exactly, it just adds the rectangles up. Okay, that's just a sum. Okay, so sigma is a sum. So that's what these formulas are doing. You guys got that down okay? All right, let's do a problem then. So you want to find the area of underneath the curve fx equals x squared between <coughs> x equals 0 and 2, and you're going to make, build a table. You're going to build a table. Okay. But before you build the table, uh, you want to draw a little sketch so you can see what's going on. Monica, was that your phone? No. Did it break? Shall I step on it? No. And. Okay, so I'll pause here for a minute for you guys to get this down. Okay. Michelle. Okay. okay. So, okay, Kartik, since you're really good at it, tell me what A is equal to. Well, focus then. Focus. Let's see if the other decibels know. What's A equal to? Monica. Monica. 
Little a, lower case a, not upper case a. What would you do without that Asian boy there at the back? Yeah. <laughs> okay, B, Nid Nidia. Nidia. Did I get, I can't get you Nidia and there's the other D here. Nitya. Yeah. Nitya. Yeah. Two. Good, thank you. And 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 Hello? Four. Read? Four. Therefore the width is width is thank you, one half. Okay? So what you're going to have is you're going to have rectangles. Diagram not drawn to scale. But then you guys do this all the time, so I don't need to make excuses. Okay, so you got four rectangles in there. Okay. The width of each rectangle is one half. Okay. Tell me what is this height here? This height here. Okay. Uh, what am I pointing to right here? Okay, can you see it now? You can't see the yellow there? Are you kidding me? What is that height equal to? Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Go for it. F of one half, which makes it F is this. Thank you. God, Henry, sometimes you are so hot, man. I said sometimes. Sometimes, okay? Yeah. Laura, shh, shh, shh. take Laura. Okay, do you see the x coordinate of this rectangle is one half? Yes. Okay. Well, the height is the y coordinate. The height is the y coordinate because, okay, the height is the y coordinate. The point lies on the curve. So if x is a half, then y has got to be a quarter. Okay. So then what's the area of the first rectangle? Which be 0.125? Well, because these numbers are going to be funky. They're not always going to be nice. Okay. This problem may not be too bad, but yeah, some other problems may be funky. All right, you guys fill in this table and do it. Okay, when you get it done, what I want you to do is add all the areas. And what do you get? Sorry? 3.75. Okay, is so everybody got 3.75? Shall I wait here for you guys to catch up on this? Okay. Well, better go look at what... Okay, so if you look at F, F2, the X coordinate is 1, so then this guy becomes 1. The next rectangle is going to be 0 0.5, because the width is half. Then it's 3 over 2, so then this guy would be 9 over 4, which is 2.25. Okay, times the width of that, which is one half. Okay, so it'll be 1.125. And then the next one would be 4 and a 2. And then you add all of them up. Yeah. Because that's what, remember, that's what I told you. You're trying to get the area by getting all these little rectangles and adding them up. Okay, and so what did you get? Everybody got that? Okay. Uh, this is an approximation. Okay. We are math people. We don't approximate. We do exact. Next problem. Too late now. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> what does that have to do with exact? Oh, no, no, you can go. I mean, if you walk, then you can go. Right? If you skateboard, you can go. It's because of parking. All right. Okay. Monica. Chris. Girls. Okay, you guys got the idea. We did four rectangles. That's not good enough for us. We're going to do more. No, it's not. Absolutely not. So guess how many we're going to do? Infinity. Infinity. Yes. And Henry is going to stay here till next week to do all that work. Okay, so this is what we're going to do, okay? This is what we're going to do. We're going to find the area by using the limiting process. Okay? You're going to go from 1 to n rectangles. Then we're going to use that formula up there, which you've already seen before. That's the right boundary formula. Okay? Now, again, a and b are still going to be the same. Okay? a and b are still 0, 2, and there are n rectangles. So, in that formula, someone tell me what delta is. What is delta? Okay, let's go over this again. Delta is equal to B minus A over N. What is B equal to? Two. What is A equal to? Zero. So, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, we've got two on the numerator. And we are using n rectangles now, but eventually we'll make it infinity. So, 2 over n, because I'm using n rectangles, and then I'll use the limiting process to make that go to infinity. So, the width of each rectangle is 2 over n. Times f a0 plus delta or i delta or delta i, whichever way you want to read that. Okay? So, I'm going to go 2 over n times i. Okay, I just switched the order of i and delta there. That's all I did. Okay? You guys with me on this? All right. Remember that f is this function here. So then this becomes limit and goes to infinity. And I'll take this 2 over n out, okay, because it doesn't depend on i. You can see that it doesn't depend on I. Okay. And in place of F, I'm going to take this value and put it in here. What do I get? Can you square that stuff and tell me what it would be? Fantastic. Good job. which is equal to limit. And notice how I go continue to write limits, okay? I don't pull an LA on this. I don't lose it anywhere, okay? I continue doing it. Now, I'm going to take this 4 over n squared out, okay? Because that doesn't depend on i. So then it becomes 8 over n cubed times sigma i equals 1 to n i squared. Okay? Everybody okay with me getting that 4 over n squared out and getting 8 over n cubed? Yeah? All right, now what you're going to do? Now what you're going to do? Fantastic, yes? Good job. Tell me what? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Good job. n times 2n plus 1 over 6. Uh, let me write this uh, better, okay? n times 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay, so are you guys not sure? Go look at page 260 and make sure that I'm not smoking on this one here. Cindy, you're with me. Did you get this? Okay, and, sorry? Oh, n times n plus 1? Okay, my bad.
Thank you. All right. Now, does 8 over 6 depend on the limit? 8 over 6 is going to remain as 8 over 6. All right? Now, at this stage, you've got a rational function, and then you've got to go to those rules, okay? Degree of the numerator versus the denominator. What's the degree of the numerator? What's the degree of the denominator? So then the limit is going to be the ratio of the coefficients. What's the coefficient at the top, the leading coefficient at the top? Sorry? Two. What's it at the bottom? One. I've already got the six out, people. I already have the six out. So then it's one. So this gives me eight over three. This is the exact answer. No ifs, buts, thens. Okay, this is the exact answer. How do I check this? Okay, you're going to check this using a calculator. I've taught you this before. You want to put in the equation x squared in there. Go graph that. And then what you're going to do? Nice, good job. Second calc what? Fantastic. Awesome. Lower limit? Nice. Upper limit? Two. Boom. Your answer. Eight over three. Two point six 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 seven. Eight over three. You guys got this? Okay. This is it. Sorry. Second calc number seven.